they murder Chinese cars. They absolutely murder them on these particular points. Bat! Bat is coming! Is the new addition to Toyota car family, Toyota Corolla Cross 2022 model, a viable alternative to China-made and slightly cheaper range cars, the ones that I'm driving, that the ones that you potentially are interested in, such as MG and such as Havel. I was given a very fortunate opportunity to test drive um, um, Toyota Corolla Cross Atmos top of the range model and take a very good look at a more affordable model of Toyota Corolla Cross in Sydney by chats with Toyota. Um, many thanks to them. And in this video I have a lot to say about the car. There is good, there is not so good and I think we all deserve to know it. So if this is something that you're interested in, please hit the like button. It takes a lot longer to put these videos together than for you to hit that like and it counts for a lot, tells me that I'm doing something right and subscribe for more. Let's talk about it. Welcome back to the channel everyone, I'm Dimitri and this is MG Owners Australia. No, we are not only reviewing MG cars, we're also reviewing Havel that I'm sitting in right now and I had a lot of cars over the past year if you have been following me on my private ownership journey. So, as opposed to the popular belief, I'm not only talking about MGs and I am genuinely always interested in other brands such as, more established brands such as Toyota, as long as they offer value for money, as long as you can get a vehicle within roughly our price range. What is our price range? Well, I would like to get reasonable luxury. I would like to feel good about driving in a car. I don't want to feel that I spent 35 plus thousand Australian dollars for real poverty, real poverty vehicles. I don't want to feel that. So I'm on the lookout for alternatives. Now, Toyota Corolla Cross has been announced and has come onto the market very, very recently, well, relatively recently, at the end of 2022. I believe personally that the car looks great. And on the website, of course, they give you kind of the lowest price mark at which it becomes available to you but in all honesty and running ahead of myself you cannot get a car for this bottom price range that is stated on the website at least i was not given that alternative when i spoke to them just last weekend um so um it's a good looking car it's a good looking car i firmly believe that toyota has done a very good job by creating a smaller rav4 kind of it looks not grandma and grandpa kind of car, as typical Corollas, I'm sorry, grandmas and grandpas, that's what typically they look like on the road, whether they're recent models, whether they're old models, they're boring cars. They're boring cars for all the people who simply remember that Toyota used to be grand at one point in time and used to offer bulletproof quality. Is that so? Is that not so? In-depth re review or speculation is not part of this video, but Every data point, every other reviewer who is more into automotive industry suggests that it's not the case for Toyotas anymore. But we are not going to focus on that. We will kind of just move on and talk about the value that this vehicle offers. Is it good enough for the money that it costs? Can you get it? And that kind of stuff. What was the actual reason? Why did I even go to Toyota? Why did I take a look at it? Well, our MG ZST is fantastic. It's a good car. I've spoken about it enough. I still, we still like it. There are a lot of videos on my channel talking about it. But it just crossed over one year of ownership. I personally like it. My wife likes it. Is it a car of our dreams? And would we like to drive it into the ground into, I don't know, five, six, seven years of ownership? No. And not because of, not because of build quality issues or anything like that. Not at all. Just because quite obviously at the end of 22, at the start of 23 in Australia, MG brand is not that yet respected and that yet recognized, which means that after the first year of ownership, the depreciation increases, massively dep increases for all cars and for MGs particularly, which is why it is simply a smarter move for you, for me, for us, unless you plan to, like I said, Uber this car into the ground. It is smart to look for a good exchange, to sell the car while it's in good condition, while it has low kilometers on the clock, and look for something different. It's not even about changing to Toyota, but it's changing to anything that's new. That is basic math. It is very, very simple, and the video is not about that, but it's full disclosure to my people. Why were you there, Dimitri? I'm there 
because I am more proactively now, after one year of ownership of MG ZST, I'm looking for potential switch. It can be Havel, it can be another MG, it can be Toyota, it can be anything, okay? They invited me to test drive Toyota Corolla Cross as soon as it became available, obviously, at Toyota Chatswood. I am genuinely grateful and I genuinely believe that while Toyota itself, parent company, is still spoiled, I do believe it's spoiled, partly deservingly because they've been here long enough, they worked hard to establish themselves here, uh, but partly it's a legacy feeling. People still think uh, that they are the only bulletproof car on the market and they never break while Haval will break tomorrow. And it's not going to happen, okay? For what it's worth, and before I start saying something, I suppose, on the edge of critical to their delivery dates, to about the Toyota Corolla Cross, I do want to be very, very clear. I don't blame individuals at Toyota Chatswood or any other dealership for that matter. I don't think that they are bad people. I think that they're trying their hardest and they try to look after their customers. I honestly believe. Specifically, the lovely lady who looked after me there, she, I think, had the customer's interests in mind. So as far as the looks of Toyota Corolla Cross are concerned, I already mentioned briefly from me looking on the website, doing my research, looks are always very, very subjective. It's very hard to compare one to one. And for us, for you and I to agree, this one is better, this one is worse, this one is better, this one is worse. From my perspective, while I like Havel H6, while I like MG ZST for their own things, I like Toyota Corolla Cross. I do like its look. I think it's fine. I think it's fine. It's perhaps a little on a low side for me, for my preference. I like, as you know already by watching my videos, I like slightly more SUV, slightly more lifted look, while Toyota Corolla Cross reminds me of lower seating Subarus with an ample amount of that plastic and rubbery, rubbery plastic that kind of gives it its off-roady, fake off-roady, by the way, and cross uh, sporty kind of look, as if really you're going to take it somewhere where you take full advantage of that, of that stuff. I don't know. Um, but I do like, I do like the look. I was test driving uh, Toyota Corolla Cross Atmos, which is the top of the range model hybrid, every bell and whistle, uh, sunroof, tinted windows, electronics, massive screen here uh, as far as the map and electronics is concerned. It's like this big, okay? Or at least it feels that way, okay? The way they designed it. So I, I drove the best. I drove the best. Um, and even comparing that absolute best, even comparing the absolute best to our MG ZST and to this... Um, uh, the Havel H6 Lux, not even Ultra, not even Vanta model. And no, I don't. I, I appreciate that I don't have sunroof here. That's the only thing that's missing. I can tell you that elements, elements of the top of the range Toyota Corolla Cross Atmos, uh, such as the infotainment screen, such as the UI itself, elements of the UI, map that's coming up, the responsiveness of the map, the frontal dash and speedometer, this electronic panel that they have there, compared to my own here in Havel and our MG ZST. Elements are definitely running circles around the Chinese manufactured cars. There you go, my Toyota people. That is honesty for honesty. Let's not butter it up. Let's call it for what it is. Let's be brutal here. They, th those elements, specifically electronics, Specifically, let's be very specific, electronics. They murder Chinese cars. They absolutely murder them on these particular points. Yeah, we got it out of the way. We're honest with each other. I can be more specific with you and I can tell you that in Atmos, again, top of the range model, um, Toyota Corolla Cross, the speedometer, this whole dash is h like, I don't even want to talk specific little bits. They have a compass. I don't care about the compass, but they have big and honest, electronically enabled speed, like massive number right here, front and center. My dear Havel people, GWM uh, representatives in Australia, my dear MG people, you know how much I'm supporting value for money cars. Why? the hell, yeah, you did not e design your UI, which is fully in your power, fully in your power, even as one of the themes, because, spoiler alert, Havel has themes, I can even switch between the themes, yeah, 
Why am I looking at this space age planet rotating here and the relatively small number that shows to me my speed while Toyota in its infinite wisdom just put it front and center so that the person can see their speed. Why can't you do the same thing? It perplexes me and I don't know if perplexing is the right term but that's the one that comes to my head right now. So some elements such as the UI design, such as the electronics, responsiveness of that electronics, at least what I've seen through the drive, are Toyota, look, they are running circles around the others. But, but is coming, but it is absolute top of the range. And Toyota Corolla Cross Atmos, hybrid model as well, yeah, hybrid, we will talk about fuel efficiency in a second, that's also where they, where they beat the crap out of others. Um, it costs 37600 I think, if I'm not mistaken, 37600 in at least in what's stated on the website. But I think in reality, with delivery charges, with the dealer costs, it probably would push you closer to 49 I think you would get the top of the range for 49 so we are sort of comparing the boxes in different weight categories, my friends. Please, let's be, let's be clear about that. That absolutely mind-boggling electronics that is, in my humble opinion, that is awesome. Awesome. It's in Atmos. And Atmos is way out of price range of a person who wants to spend 37 grand on a car. So the person who wants to spend 37 grand on a car still should be very damn happy with what they ha they got from, say, Havel H6. And I am happy in case it doesn't come very clearly to you. But because it's electronics, because it's software, me as a person who professionally is not that far from the software world, I look at it and I'm like, my Chinese people, why didn't you just go one tiny step further and give me a theme, a theme of this UI that rearranges things a little more functionally as opposed to seeing a globe here turning. Why? What are we trying to conquer the globe? Is that the message here? Like, I mean, I'm saying it tongue in cheek. You know what I'm saying. But sometimes when you look at something and you think it can relatively easily be so much better and it's not, you just simply lose it a little bit, I suppose. Uh, in Toyota Atmos, you get wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. I think not having a wire and being able to connect through Bluetooth or whatever it does there magically um, and have Apple CarPlay and other kind of stuff automatically without wires. I also do not think that with the current level of development of electronics that is in this car, that is in Toyota, that is in MG, I do not see the reason for Chinese brands to not give us this functionality. I do not know why Toyota has it and we don't have it. It, it's just, again, I understand it's probably a little more expensive, yeah? But surely it's a little more expensive rather than, oh, complete different ballpark game. I can't believe it. We'll never believe it. All right. So these are the bits that Toyota, rightly so, deserves as a massive pat on the back. And like I said, runs circles, circles around these Chinese cheaper manufactured vehicles. The rest of the interior in Toyota is poverty, even in Toyota Atmos, even in the top of the range, close to 50 grand, Toyota Corolla Cross Atmos. I cannot freaking believe how, don't know even what the term to use, I don't want to say stingy in terms of design, but in terms of space, in terms of other kind of stuff, it feels the central panel, the central panel where you're supposed to put your water bottle, where you're supposed to find a way to put your phone and other kind of stuff, it's like it was... It's like the rest of the car was designed by a different team within Toyota, right? So one part of the car is designed by people who moved on with the program and are keeping up with the 2022-2023 with the years rolling on our calendars. While the rest of the team, the one that supplied all these cheap, it's cheap plastic panels and this weird, really ancient looking bare bones, bare bones holders for the cups and stuff, and you know how much I love my ergonomics, you know how much I love being comfortable in my car. Oh my God, oh, oh my God, it's mind-boggling how ancient and basic it feels at a close to 50 grand price range. Lordy, you look at the at the interior, in, in MG ZST as well, right? My only issue with interior of MG ZST is the fact that leather is fake, 
and the fact that the interior is a bit smaller, so I feel hotter and a little more contained in there, and a sunroof in MGZST helps. Here I don't need it, here I have enough of headspace and everything, right? But in uh, Toyota, in Toyota Corolla Cross, even top of the range Atmos, plastic feels cheap. Nowhere to put your stuff. Nowhere to put your stuff. And by nowhere, I mean, sure, you can find a spot, my Toyota Defenders, but it's seriously nothing compared to what you get in these cars. Nothing. 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 Now, fuel economy. So, fuel economy is stated on the website of Toyota that for all models of the hybrid enabled engine of Toyota Corolla Cross, um, from the cheapest one to the topmost one, Atmos, is 4.3 liters per 100 kilometers. That is amazing if it's true, but we wouldn't be able to find out, would we? Because I didn't have the car in my possession for a week or so to actually test it properly and talk about that. But it is something, if they are so boldly projecting this to us and telling us that that's the fuel economy, it's also a hybrid technology, I kind of tend to believe them. I tend to believe them. I do think that you will be saving on petrol. How it drives. Let's talk about how it drives. Toyota Corolla Cross Atmos, top of the range. Look, it drives okay. It drives okay. But there are two elements to it. First, policy of Toyota, um, apparently in Australia, maybe it's Toyota Chatswood specifically. I don't know actually if it's global Toyota policy or whatever. But their policy is that there is a dude driving with you. I mean, I'm driving, but the dude is sitting with me. He was lovely, by the way, the one that they gave me, the assistant who helped me, spoke to me about the car, um, kind of guided me a little bit during the test drive and stuff like this. Did I need this? No, I didn't. Would I have destroyed the car during the test drive Toyota? No, I wouldn't have. I'm a good driver, all right? But I guess not everyone is like me, and there is a reason why you send the dude here to look after those who are test driving your cars. It's cool. I try not to judge. It's hard for me not to judge, but I'll try not to judge, okay? Um, it drives okay. I wouldn't say it's a powerhouse. It didn't feel like a powerhouse to me. I heard the engine. The engine is relatively quiet. Not as quiet as in Havel, sorry. Um, but I definitely noticed it going like... Like suddenly I heard it when we went even up a small hill. It wasn't even a massive hill and the car certainly was not loaded. There were two people in it. So judging by that, I can tell you that for city driving, Toyota Corolla Cross is probably going to be okay and very economical, evidently as well. But I do not think that if you expect any remotest performance from the car, which I actually, by the way, call it for what it is, but I do feel like this 2-liter petrol engine in Havel gives me that feeling, if I want to. I want to put the pedal down a little bit and boom, it goes, you know? I actually like it. In Toyota Corolla Cross, I did not, I did not feel it. Toyota Corolla Cross is not a massive car. It's definitely, it's not tiny. It's not the CHR model that basically has no boot kind of thing. Um, and Toyota, I don't think that Toyotas are particularly known to be super duper amazing with their internal space, such as, for example, Honda, let's say, is very famous for its magic seats that go flat down into the floor and give you massive amounts of space. I owned a couple of Hondas before I switched on to my Jeep and to, and to my Chinese cars. Um, so I can, again, give credit where it's due. I don't think Toyota feels that way or is even priding themselves in it. Toyota still tries to ride on the horse of the marketing campaign of many, many years of Toyota being absolutely unkillable and the most reliable, even though the plastic there feels cheaper than in this car, I'll be honest with you. But maybe other hinges and the ancient automatics there, um, or maybe not so ancient, is something that will carry it forward. I don't know. You and I will never know, okay? Uh, I certainly intend to change my cars frequently enough just to continue living a life, even if it's not every year, even if it's every three, five years, before anything major happens. Keep that in mind, all right? Um, so, boot is okay. Boot is okay. It looks generous enough for Toyota Corolla, yeah? Uh, and it's a cross, obviously. So, it's, it's kind of hatchback -y slash SUV-E compared to a normal Corolla. Now, finally, we got to the final point that kind of brings it all together. So, pricing-wise... I do think, I took a look at Atmos, Atmos is pushing 50 grand. I got this, not top of the range, but close to it, 
for 37 and I love it. I love I love everything about it other than something that I'll be talking to you about very very soon in the next video possibly. It's a slightly too invasive, too intrusive lane keep assist system, but that's a separate story, okay? Um here is where it all becomes unstuck for Toyota. So so far you listen to me and you're like, well, sounds like a good car, Dimitri, sounds like a great car. I think so too. I do think so too. But before we wrap up, I probably will talk to you a little bit, not about Atmos, the top of the range, but GLX or GX or whichever, whichever that version is that is actually closer to 37. So more one-to-one -one comparison. That one, my friends, I haven't test driven that one. So I'm going to be generous and I'm going to assume that it drives the same as the top of the range. Nice, nice Toyota Corolla Cross Atmos. But the finishes and what you get for about 37 grand are so poverty that you can't even defend it even if you're a hardcore Toyota fan. As long as you're being honest and not just being blindly defensive, right? Take a look at this. Take a look at this. Go into, into your local MG, um, auto yard, wherever you have MGs. Go into Havel, sit in one, and then talk to me in the comments down below. I welcome your... As long as it's honest opinion, okay? But not the top of the range Toyota Corolla Cross. Is cloth seats, is manual lever-based adjustments of the seats, is smaller, not as amazing central infotainment screen that is more closer to size to my Havel H6 one, like eight and something inches, whatever. Apparently, we didn't turn the engine, but apparently the main dash and the main software and stuff is still as good. I do not know if it offers you the wireless CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. It certainly also doesn't have any of the, um, you know, sunroof and or any of that kind of stuff. But honestly, the price that you will pay for this and the price that will potentially get you into a Toyota Corolla Cross in the base model is giving you a complete, like, giving you a, I'm sorry, Toyota, like a basic plastic shoebox, I swear. I swear. And I've been generous enough with my feedback, I think, for you to understand that I'm not just here to slam things. But me coming back after test driving that lovely Atmos and looking at the base model that I can actually afford, and then coming and sitting in my car back before I drove home, made me feel grateful. It made me feel grateful to the fact that I have this. Because... Honestly, what you get for 37 grand from Toyota, oh my lord, oh my lord, just good luck to you, okay? Now, as far as getting stuff from Toyota, final thing, and I don't want to call it a nail in the coffin, but I, I, I feel for you, Toyota, I feel for you, okay? But oh my god, the way that you arranged the, I suppose, taking orders without fulfilling them, which only increases the tail end of the queue of people waiting for their cars, the way you arrange the manufacturing and sourcing of different chips for different sides of the world, of course it doesn't depend on you and who expected a global pandemic followed by a certain military conflict which everyone is suffering from. I feel for you. But I am being told openly that A, nobody knows exactly when you're getting these cars. Even if you listened to me, went to Toyota, test driven it and decided to still order one. You don't know when you're getting it. It can be a year, it can be a year and a half. I am being told, and I do not think that it's confidential information, because A, I was not told to keep it to myself, and B, I'm just a customer who was told that in passing by someone else there. RAV4s. I know that RAV4s are among the top most in-demand cars, which maybe Toyota Corolla Cross is not. But still, apply this angle, yeah, when you listen to me. Apparently, uh, the waiting time for a brand new, for a brand new Toyota RAV4 in Australia, in 2022, used to be a year and a half. Now I am being told that it's pushing three years. Uh, I'll pause, process it. How about that? In three years, you are getting a completely different vehicle, potentially, because it's three bloody years, uh, than what you've ordered and test driven, yeah? And it's not like there is any benefit for you pre-ordering this vehicle right now, because it's not like the price and the spec and the spec and everything else is going to be frozen in time, waiting for you three years after, and there you go, your nice, get your nice car with a ribbon on top. No, they will get you in in three years. You would have forgotten by then that you ordered, ordered a car, 
And then they will negotiate with you and they will basically start talking to you about just how much more improved the car is. Hence, you owe them extra. I don't know. Don't want to speculate. Five, ten grand, two grand. I don't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But I think even if I completely trashed Chinese cars and said, oh my God, you see what you're getting for your money. Toyota is Toyota. Mwah, wonderful, right? Even if I said all of that, which I didn't in this video. I still think that it all becomes unstuck just simply on order fulfillment timelines. If you have to wait generously, I'm being generous, a year, even 12 months, who wants to wait 12 months for a car? Who does? Let's say something happens, actually happens to my MG ZST and I have to buy a new car. Why would I order one from Toyota? What if, well, if I knew, if I want a new one, I mean, and I want a new one, okay? And there are a lot of people who want new ones for that kind of money, right? So, my friends, let's wrap up. Would I recommend to any one of my subscribers, of any people who are interested in budget-friendly vehicles in Australia in 2022, to order a Toyota, including a Toyota Corolla Cross? As much as I've enjoyed driving the top-of-the-range Atmos model, absolutely not. Absolutely not. And it has nothing to do with the fact that the whole brand of this channel stands for MG and Havel and that kind of stuff. Absolutely not. I hope I, it came across loud and clear that I'm trying to be objective and I am open to other brands to offer us some sort of budget-friendly, value-for-money vehicles that you can uh, receive, that you can actually get the delivery of. Toyota as good as its electronics is, as good as the history of the vehicles um, kind of is, as good as this whole brand is. I'm not arguing with that fact. But I think that right now the whole business, the whole enterprise, the whole supply of Toyota is in such shambles that it is A, very hard to believe that it's even possible that far after COVID or even with military conflict somewhere there up in Europe that they are so paralyzed that delivery of things like RAV4 takes three years. And I'm, by the way, being told that delivery of the higher-end models of the new uh, Land Cruiser, for example, such as Sahara models, takes up to five. Yes, I know, I know. Like, it sounds like I'm making this stuff up. I don't know, I'm just, I'm just telling you what I was told, okay? I'm just kind of telling you exactly the same information. It's absolute freaking shambles. As well as, like we already discussed, I simply believe that for the advertised price of about 37 grand for the very base model of Toyota Corolla Cross, you can get something like this, which is gorgeous, which is offering you a lot more creatures comforts and a lot more value for money on seven year unlimited kilometer warranty. And no, I'm not getting paid and I'm still not being sponsored as a channel in case you are new here and you listen to me until this point. I appreciate your attention, by the way. Thank you very much. But please understand that this comes from a private owner's perspective, from the person who pays for my cars with cash, my own personal cash. These are my opinions. Please let me know in the comments down below if this was insightful. I hope it was. Give me a like if it was and share your opinions as always. Do you have a Toyota? Do you want one? Would you order a Toyota if you had to wait one and a half years plus? For delivery? Would you order? Why? Why would you do that to yourself? I'm, I'm genuinely interested, you know. So, again, thank you very much for tuning in and for your patronage. And I'll be speaking to you again about something else Havel related. As I already mentioned, and as a reward for those of you who watched the whole video, thank you very much. Um, there are two topics on my mind. First one, do you need a dash cam in Sydney, Australia? Not a dodgy country. People are not throwing themselves on the bonnets, but there are still circumstances that absolutely need to be captured on camera. And also, I wanted to give you some further insights about Havel H6. Further insights about Havel H6, where the main annoyance that I'm discovering now is the invasiveness and really in how insistent on its presence is the lane keep assist system emergency lane keep assist it is something that beats even mg pilot it is something it is something else okay um but i'm still enjoying the car just finding out more about it and as always we'll bring more information to you not subscribed yet why not why not support the growth of the channel and subscribe for more similar videos if you enjoyed this one thanks again talk to you soon bye for now